as they leave the locker room. It's the last message the players see, and it's a quote from Bob Torrance. He said that to every player, before we walk to the first tee, he'd shake your hand and he'd say, happiest days of your lives. This trip is a redemption trip. Those players who played in that team, many of them are on this team, it's time to uh, make amends. I think it's a motivation rather than a negative. After the pomp, the circumstance, the ceremonies and the official functions, who would remember the week with greater fondness? We asked which team would leave the battleground thoroughly deflated, which captain would be hailed a hero. Europe were installed as the favourites to retain the cup. Yet, after their psychologically crushing defeat at Medina, many believed the American backlash would spoil the party. The answers would be provided at Glen Eagles. Spectators started to arrive at Glen Eagles long before dawn on the first morning, and with the opening session of four balls about to get underway, many of the 45,000 fans were about to provide a terrifying wall of sound around the first tee. The peace of the Perthshire Glens had never been so disturbed. For Europe's first pair of Justin Rose and Henrik Stenson, nothing prepared them for this moment, but at least their captain was confident. I think we had 12 strong players, very strong players. Um, we, we, we had four of the top five players in the world. We had great guys, we had pairings that were there. Uh, they tested and proven. I think it was important to show our strength. Wave after wave after wave and to win with 12 players. Not just win by trying to get to the line as quick as we can. We had to be patient. We had to go wave after wave after wave and wear the American team down. Well, if they were nervous, Rose and Stenson didn't show it with their opening tee shots against Bubba Watson and Webb Simpson. And by the time Rory McIlroy and Sergio Garcia made their entrance, the atmosphere was electric. It was great. We were ready. It was noisy. I was ready. I was in captain's mode then. At that stage, I'm thinking half a day ahead. I'm thinking of the afternoon session. I was letting the guys go off the first tee and with a vice captain of each one. My job, I felt, was not to be out there as a cheerleader for the players, but to plot the next move for the team. Justin Rose, a winner in Europe and America this season, was truly inspired by the occasion and led partner Stenson to an overwhelming 5-4 and four victory. Martin Keimer was equally impressive in tandem with Thomas Bjorn, returning to Ryder Cup action for the first time for 12 years. The Europeans had to be content with a half, however, against Ricky Fowler and Jimmy Walker, who twice holed out for birdies to avoid defeat. Ian Poulter, hero in Medina two years ago, was paired with rookie local man Stephen Gallagher, but America's exciting young rookies, Jordan Spieth and this man, Patrick Reed, had won by the 14th. Sergio Garcia's bunker play was a highlight of his and McElroy's match against the tried and tested Keegan Bradley and Phil Mickelson, three times winners at Medina. But Bradley's putter helped the Americans to take the point one up to give his team the session by two and a half points to one and a half. A situation like this morning, important wasn't not to overreact to it, okay? Wasn't a session that went our way, but to lead out with uh, Lee Westwood in the afternoon was huge. Westwood and partner Welsh debutante Jamie Donaldson were one down early on, but in a tight match, Westwood, making his ninth Ryder Cup appearance, saw his team home two up against Matt Kuchar and 44-year-old Jim Furyk, the American team's veteran, also making his ninth appearance. Jamie and Lee played particularly strongly Lee was immense, absolutely immense, to go out with that spirit and steady the ship. That's why he was playing number one this afternoon. Justin Rose was again in irresistible form as he and Stenson beat Mahan and Zach Johnson two and one. 
Walker and Fowler earned a creditable half with Garcia and McElroy. The Americans, with the help of this birdie at the 11th, were two up with three to play and apparently cruising to a proud and unexpected victory until the world's number one reduced the arrears with a magnificent birdie at the 17th. And the Europeans went on to snatch a half a point when Garcia followed up this majestic approach from the deep rough of the 18th with another birdie. After defeat in the morning, the smile had returned to the face of this year's two-time major champion. And it was left to Graham McDowell in the last match, making his first appearance of the week alongside Frenchman Victor Dubuisson to complete a three and two win over an off-color Bradley and Mickelson. The afternoon session on Friday was huge. You know, we got beaten in the session the first morning. I always felt the toughest guys to play against in Ryder Cups were guys like Zach Johnson and Matt Kuchar, Jim Furyk, those guys that just give you nothing. It's just one relentless thing. Oh my God, are they ever going to make a mistake? Mistakes were few and far between from Reed and Spieth. On Saturday morning, they trounced Bjorn and Keimer five and three. And when Walker and Fowler were one up through 15 against McElroy and Poulter, 6-6 six, six at lunchtime was on the cards. That is, until Poulter supplied yet more Ryder Cup wizardry. And you know, there was more to come as the match finished all square. The half point that Poulter and McElroy got was huge. It meant that Europe went into the foursomes still in the ascendancy. What transpired proved crucial. The afternoon session on Saturday was when we pulled away and gave ourselves a lead. With restoked fire in their bellies and refueled with determination, Donaldson joined Westwood in leading the way. I want this to just be relentless. The first wave doesn't hit, the second wave will hit. The second wave doesn't hit, the third wave will hit. Show our strength, just wear them down. Instructions were followed with Dubuisson, a victor, in more than name only. The Frenchman and double French Open winner McDowell hammered Walker and Fowler five and four. Then the superstars delivered as Garcia and world number one McElroy proved too much for Mahan and Furyk. As at Medina, so much now rested on the final match. Two up with seven to play, the pressure was intense for Reed and Spieth. Keimer and his predecessor as US Open champion simply refused to lose. The putt that Justin Rose hold on a Saturday night was massive to get that half point. That was massive. It stopped them from getting any kind of momentum that, like Poulter gave us in Medina. Leading 10-6, Europe was on the high road to success in Scotland. And needing four points to retain the trophy, Europe's captain packed his top order with his biggest names, with Graham McDowell leading the charge against the impressive Jordan Spieth. With Graham, I didn't give him an option. He was playing number one. I was working with him with a plan. A little bit like a cyclist in the Tour de France. So you got the team around you and you're doing the work, you're doing the work, they're doing the work and you're doing the work and then you move to the front. Same with Rory, I didn't want to have the big um, expectation playing in the very first game every day. Um, and that, that was kind of the strategy there. But America staged an immediate fight back on Sunday. Spieth was three up on McDowell after five, and his fellow rookie Patrick Reed, clearly reveling in his first Ryder Cup, went on to make a two-putt birdie at the last to beat Henrik Stenson, whilst compatriot Matt Kuchar was never behind against Thomas Bjorn. A Ryder Cup wouldn't be a Ryder Cup without swings and roundabouts and things going your way. It's important for me as a captain, important for my body language, that I don't look panicked, that I don't think, oh my God. It's important to just be calm and collected. It was going to happen. You can't have a Ryder Cup and have everything go your way. These are great players, these American players. They were young, they were hungry, they were going to play great. And it was very important for me um, not to panic. Nor his players indeed. In the top match, as Spieth began to falter, so McDowell's tenacity shone through. A McElroy masterclass accounted for Ricky Fowler, 
And then by winning five holes from six on the back nine, McDowell was two up with three to play and a half in three at the short 17th delivered the result his captain craved. The match between Martin Keimer and Bubba Watson ended spectacularly with the German chipping in for an eagle three at 16 to win three and two. And the golf was equally magnificent between Hunter Mahan and Justin Rose. Mahan four up after six with the help of four birdies. Rose then replied with five winning birdies of his own coming home. But in the end, he was glad to share the spoils after Mahan bogeyed the last. With Garcia overcoming Furyk one up, a European triumph was then in sight as Jamie Donaldson went dormy four against Keegan Bradley. What a way to finish. There's a little amphitheatre down there on that 15th hole. Uh, big stand behind the green, huge crowds around, big hill on the left-hand side, um, and it was electric. Jamie, middle of the fairway, balls in the air coming down a stick, and I'm saying, go, 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 because it was right cut right over the bunker. And the caddy, Mick, who's, who's beside me, whispers, says, don't worry, there's plenty club, there's plenty club. See, the caddies know. Of course, the ball just came down perfect. I mean, wow, what a, what a grandstand finish. Keegan conceded the match. Donaldson victorious four and three, his captain euphoric. And then to walk down that fairway with Tom as well too was, was, was special. And so were the celebrations. A united Europe with a record nine nationalities represented, won the singles six and a half, five and a half, and retained the trophy by 16 and a half points to 11 and a half. Captain McGinley and family were rightly bursting with pride. Captain Watson was typically magnanimous. Uh, I'm very proud of my team's efforts. Uh, the one thing I, I asked them to do right from the very beginning is give it absolutely everything they had and they did. They just ran up against a buzzsaw. The, uh, the European team was very, very strong and they, and they played it. When you have four of the top five players in the world and you're playing against them, you'd better be firing on all cylinders and frankly, we weren't. So that's it. I think it's a, it could be a final chapter in my Ryder Cup participation. It was a fitting way to end, you know. I've risen through from a player to a vice captain and now captaincy, and I feel like I'm finishing at the top. Um, I don't want to push my luck. I've done six Ryder Cups, they've all turned out wonderfully well, and I feel very lucky.